Hello, welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing how to use WebViews in Flutter. So here we will be using one of the plugins that is developed by the Flutter team. So I'll be providing this link in the description. So that is called the WebView Flutter. So let's start. As usual, I'll be starting with an empty template. And first thing we have to do is we have to import the WebView packages and we are going to need the async package as well. And I'm going to add a builder. So builder will take a builder property that will return the that will have the builder context, and we are going to add a view inside that. And we are going to give the initial URL. Let's give it flutter dot dev, and and uh, we are going to enable the JavaScript. So once that is done, uh, you can just run it to see uh, if that is working. So a part will start. So it's loading the Flutter website. All right. So next thing we are going to do is I'm going to add some navigation controls to the app bar. So let's create another class. I'm going to call it navigation controls. And that is going to have a constructor and that will take a web view feature controller. Okay, so let's declare that. So that is a feature that uh, takes a web view as a type, a view controller as a type. Okay, let's, so let's declare that and let's override the build method. build so that will take the context <coughs> and it's going to return uh, some icons uh, so the, let's add the feature builder so once the uh, web view returns we are going to show these controls so the feature will be the web view controller feature And it's going to return the async snapshot with the WebView controller since it is a future WebView controller. Okay. Okay. So let's declare a boolean. So I'm going to call it WebView ready. So if the snapshot or connection state is done, we know that the WebView is ready. And let's get the controller from the snapshot. It calls snapshot dot data to get the controller, and let's return the row with some icons. So the first icon will be a, a backward icon. Okay, so arrow back iOS, and on press of the button, we are going to check if the web view is not ready. So we will return null. Else, we are going to let's make it async. So we are going to get the, uh, we are going to check if uh, the controller can go back. So if there is any history of the view, so it will go back. Else we are going to say, we are going to show a snack bar that will say, so inside snack bar, let's show snack bar, let's create a new snack bar. The content as a text, uh, it is going to say let's say no back history item. All right, okay. Now we have the go back button. Now let's copy that and add a forward button. So change that to forward iOS and change to go can go forward. Forward else, no forward history. Item. So now I'm going to copy that and, and I'm going to create one more icon. So let's call it a refresh. And uh, let's remove the function and let's call controller.reader. 
all right so let's add the navigation controls to the app bar so actions navigation controls so it accepts a web control of future right so we need to declare that in the main class so go ahead and declare that so let's call final let's uh, add a completed class so this will create a future and that helps us to return a value in the future with a value or some error so so let's wrap it around the review controller and let's pass it controller dot future to the navigation controls and uh, once we have the web view created so on web view created we'll take the web view controller object okay so that will return the web view controller object so once we have that we are going to call controller dot complete so that will pass the web view controller once that is complete uh, once that is called it will call the uh, future builder complete and should load the icons so here you can see you can see the icons so let's click back so there is no history so when you click forward there is no forward history so when you reload reloads the web page and when you click on learn more so we have a back item now so when you click it will go back so when you click forward it should go to the learn more okay Right. let's go back okay reload so that is all working so the next thing we are going to do is uh, let's add some JavaScript channels so you can have any number of uh, JavaScript channels so let's add a new function snackbar JavaScript channel so that will take the context and let's uh, write that function copy that and, uh, okay so let's write our function so snackbar javascript channel that will return a javascript channel and the context as a parameter and return javascript channel so it will have a name let's give a name I'm going to call it snack bar js channel and on message received when it receives a message we are going to show a snack bar okay so that is a javascript message and we are going to create a snack bar and show it so show snack bar and with content text as the message so call message dot message all right okay so let's go to the navigation controls and create one more icon so let's call it uh, info and on click of the button let's call any function show user agent that will take the web view controller as a parameter and the context so let's write the method show user agent so that will take the web view controller controller and the build context context so call controller dot evaluate javascript so you can have any javascript string there so let's copy our channel snack bar javascript channel dot post message so let's get the user agent so i'm going to show user agent colon uh, get the user agent from the navigator so navigator dot user agent So okay, so restart the app, and we should see a info button there. Okay, so click on that, and we should see the user agent. Okay, so the, that's a basic tutorial about web views in Flutter. We will see more, what more this plugin can do in the next tutorial. So if you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe share and like the video hit the bell icon for notifications and thanks for watching